The Bahamas Tonight, the Northern Edition, starts now. This is The Bahamas Tonight, the Northern Edition. Good evening, I'm Sabrina Brown. Thank you for joining us. Topping the news in commemoration of its August 19th, 1992 victory at the polls, members and supporters of the Free National Movement attended the annual church service on Sunday. The party leader was on hand for the special service. Shishina Roll reports. Twenty-two years ago marked the Free National Movement's rise to power as government. Leader of the opposition, past and present local parliamentarians, as well as other supporters gathered for a special church service to commemorate the historic event. During the service, FNM leader Dr. Hubert Minnis told those in attendance that this country is at a very important juncture. And we are being faced with the constitutional referendum, which would have an impact in the direction our country moving forward and I asked as was stated earlier I asked that you all listen to all issues understand the issues and then do what you feel is right because you are making decision for future generation Minnis also took the opportunity to explain why they voted against value-added tax we had opposed it because we felt that it was, a, it was a tax geared especially to have great impact on the middle class. We felt that it would have increased poverty. And we also felt that it would have had great impact, especially on the young people, because they are the ones who make up the bulk of the consumer and the labor force. And as a party, we, our view is to expand and grow the middle class and decrease poverty, not the reverse. Pastor Alfie's Woodside's message focused on leadership. Therefore, as a leader, we must be cognizant of our surroundings. We must guard our lips. And the only way to do that is by committing our thoughts to God. Without character, our mission becomes a catchy glitch that fails to affect our lives and the lives of others. Character proves to others the seriousness of our commitment. Character expresses interest in the well-being of other relationships, as well as getting the job done. A number of distinguished persons within the Free National Movement were presented with certificates in an awards and recognition ceremony at the end of the service. Shashina Roll, ZNS Network News. A young Bahamian who has made a name for himself on the stage is now venturing into a new area. Hi, my name is Alan Smith Jr. and I approve this message. He's known for his work in the film industry, having produced three films including Politicking in Paradise and Frappa Avec Amour, which hit the international scene last year. But CEO and founder of Prince Louis Projects, Nathaniel Lewis is now exploring a different side. The film producer is preparing to launch a new wine, Nathaniel Grand Bahamar. I've always wanted to launch a, a brand. Um, I wanted something that was obviously fun, something that was interesting and unique, but at the same time can be connected back to the film studio and obviously promote my films and movies. And so I thought, why not a beverage, a beverage that's classy, that's expressive, and wine was the absolute perfect fit. He says after lots of research and months of fine tuning, the wine, which is dry with fruity notes, is ready to hit the market. It's called Nathaniel. And it's a 2012 Pinot Noir harvested in California, but it was customly crushed exclusively for this brand label. So this is the only Pinot Noir of its kind that you will ever find in the world. And so I'm very, very excited to bring this product to Grand Bahama. It's a first for Grand Bahama. Lewis says he's happy to have the support of local businesses. I was able to reach out to a few five-star restaurants on the island, including that, and of course establishments as well, like Neptune's Port Lakaya like uh, Flying Fish, and I was able to network with them and pre-sell bottles. And once I was able to do that, I was then able to collaborate with the winery in creating this brand. And so the main story behind it is 
the wine of cinematic culture in the Bahamas. This young entrepreneur is already working on the second in a series of wines to come. And that one's going to be called Lewis Yard and it's going to be a brachetto. It's an Italian sparkling wine and it when I say it is amazing, it is absolutely amazing. Grand Bahamar will be formally unveiled during a red carpet event on Saturday evening. The Community Leadership Conclave, coordinated by the West Grand Bahama Youth Development Association, held on the weekend to discuss issues affecting residents in the area. Ricardo Lightborn reports. The West Grand Bahama Youth Development Association Community Leaders Conclave held a design Baptist Church in Eight Mile Rock. Preparing leaders for the future is the theme. Pastor Lindy Russell moderated the sessions. Fred Delancey welcomed the youth leaders to the conclave. Jerron Harvey, local government representative, gave the youth leaders much to think about. The young counselor is a product of West Grand Bahama and says simply, he's got a lot of faith in the young people in the district. I have always been an advocate for the community of Big Rock. The community that schooled me, churched me, fed me, groomed me, and even disciplined me. Eight Mile Rock has a rich history and one that must be illuminated. We must create a collective effort to provide growth, opportunities, and mentorship for the residents in our community, specifically our young boys and girls. They are the now generation. This gathering today is a step in the right direction, a direction that is filled with endless opportunities and young leaders that are emerging. I felt that unity was Councilor Frazette the Gibson also told the youth and leaders to dream and dream big and fulfill those dreams. Share. Youth Coordinator, and Ministry of Youth Sports there, and Culture, Carla Brown Roker, left no stone and unturned and told the youth leaders that unity in West Grand Bahama, indeed, the Bahamas is essential. We must look out for our young people. All of these young idol young people who necessarily cannot find a job for, for various reasons, if we put them as apprentices to other people, then we are building a bridge to the future. But when we leave them walking up and down in the hot sun with their resume and people dismissing them everywhere they go, we are absolutely frustrating them and there's a level of frustration that they will reach and it ain't gonna be pretty. And so we need to stop with the rhetoric and we need to put action to our words. Broke upon the community awareness, caring for the elderly and strive to uplift the West Grand Bahama area is a major concern. The workshop sessions discuss the church and the community, preparing youth leaders for the future, training and job opportunities. Ricardo Lightborn, ZNS News. Police on Grand Bahama are investigating the sudden death of a 33-year-old man. Reports say Dutil Norius of number 22 Tasman Circle Freeport was electrocuted while at his place of employment at a resort in the Lukaya area shortly after 9 o'clock Saturday morning. The man was transported to the Rand Memorial Hospital where he was pronounced dead. This matter is under investigation. Meanwhile, a tragic car accident over on the island of Abaco has left 21-year-old Gennaro Stewart of Murphytown dead. According to police reports, the incident occurred shortly before 5 p.m. on Saturday on Ernestine Highway. Police say a blue 2008 Grand Suzuki Vitara was reportedly traveling south when the driver lost control and ran off the road. The four occupants all received injuries about the body. However, Stewart succumbed to his injuries. Police are investigating this matter. Stay with us. There's more news after this. Bringing news that matters to you. You're watching The Bahamas Tonight, Northern Edition. Welcome back. There is more good news for employees in the public service. The workers recently received a lump sum payment as part of a new industrial agreement and President of the Bahamas Public Services Union, John Pinder says, during these tough economic times, the union was able to secure additional benefits. Persons who were not paying on the right NIB contribution, they will now pay the correct contribution as of 2013 and will probably would have only been receiving $285 from NIB. They will now receive as much as $1,200. Uh, we thought that was a significant accomplishment in there. There's an increase to travel allowance, there's an increase to mileage, there's an increase to the 
persons who receive respons have certain responsibility, they will also have an increase in their allowances. And in 2017, the government is expected to give another lump sum payment. The labor leader says the union has exhausted all avenues to obtain the best contract possible for the workers at this time. We have asked in an addendum to our industrial agreement that if the government is able to receive more royalties from natural resources, be it salt, aragonite, oil, that we can come back to the board to try and, and negotiate some more benefits and even that lump sum payment is scheduled for 217, that should be attached to persons' uh, net salaries. While the campaign to drive down the cost of electricity on Grand Bahama continues, the local organization leading the charge is receiving support from two unions on Grand Bahama. Shashina Roll has the details. The Grand Bahama Taxi Union and the Bahamas Customs and Immigration Allied Workers Union standing with the Grand Bahama Coalition for Concerned Citizens. The union leaders say they represent the working class, many of whom are living without power on Grand Bahama today. All that is necessary for evil to flourish is for good men to do nothing. And we did nothing for too long. Now it's time for us to do something. Treasurer Rudy Stubbs of the Bahamas Customs and Immigration Allied Workers Union says enough is enough. Where is the heart of these people? That is my question. If you love us so much, I think you need to operate differently. But as concerned citizens, we will do what is necessary, we will agitate, and we will ensure that justice comes to our people, the citizens here on Grand Bahama. The president of the Grand Bahama Taxi Union says they are also prepared to stand with the Grand Bahama Coalition for Concerned Citizens. We represent a people that uh, is barely making ends meet as it is now. It is unfortunate that persons have to sleep in the dark and have little babies and can't make a hot bottle of milk to feed their kids. This is what the coalition core values are. We believe we are here to let the, pers the powers to be that we are concerned citizens here in, in, in the Bahamas, and we have to do something about the electricity rate. Area Vice President of the BCIAWU says for far too long, Grand Bahamians have had to deal with high electricity bills. The hub um, something additionally bringing you more hardship is really not good. And what is being offered or what is being put in place by this coalition is something that the residents of Grand Bahama should get behind. Now, ask yourself this. What is the cost of doing nothing? We have done nothing rather well and for too long, but now it's time that we should do something. So rather than complain about it, people should actually do something about it and try to get behind initiatives like this. They say point blank, if you want to see a change in your electricity bill, you must take a stand. Shashina Roll, ZNS Network News. Now the Grand Bahama Power Company says that it will remain committed in its efforts to maintain reliable electricity, stabilize cost and seek out alternative fuel options to reduce dependence on foreign oil. Officials say a three-point plan has been implemented, which has been able to improve reliability as well as the frequency and duration of outages by some 51%. In other news, the West End Community Back to School program, coordinated by We Can, held on the weekend. Here's Ricardo Lightborn. Invited guests, parents, family, friends, teachers, and students gathered at the St. Mary Magdalene Church in West End for the West End Community Action Network We Can Back to School program under the theme, Education, Our Passport for the Future. Principal of the West End Primary School, Navadia Mills, told the students to do their best always and be proud of West End. We want to make sure that when you go out to represent West End Primary School, you are the best. You are top notch and you will be successful. And guess what? Even if you are not successful, once you would have done your best, we will all be very proud of you. And so I encourage you this year, please do your best. Try your hardest, reach for the stars. 
and never settle for less than your best. Deacon Jeff Hollingsworth of the St. Michael's Catholic Church encouraged parents to support their children and to go back to basics. And he had a special prayer for the teachers and administrators. I pray this morning that truly the efforts of our teachers, administrators, our parents, and our guardians will help these young people this morning to develop totally. See, the human person is made up of mind, body, and soul. Let us attack on those three fronts and develop our children in mind, intellectually, in body, physically, but also in soul, spiritually, understanding that your soul belongs to God. Deputy Director of Urban Renewal, Michelle Rackley, shared in the celebrations and congratulated We Can Committee. Exciting for me anytime I see anyone investing in human, especially children, because our children are our tomorrow, they are our today, and of course, our yesterday, and it is up to us to help their dreams become realities. The children were given certificates and they are ready for the start of the new year. Ricardo Lightborn, ZNS Network News. And don't go away, Ricardo Lightborn is up next with sports. Hey everybody, welcome to Sports and Ricardo Lightborn. This one goes out to the folks down in the Southern Bahamas. Do not take that storm lightly. While Team Bahamas competing, uh, complete a competition in the Youth Olympic Games down there in China. Well, let me tell you that on the track, uh, Deshanae Roll was fourth in the B finals of the 400 meters in 1 minute uh, 2.34 seconds. And Paula Zosa also finished 29th uh, in uh, the one man dinghy competition. Uh, the Bahamas was represented by some 13 athletes and uh, they had a great time over there at the games making their way back home. At the Grand Bahamas Amateur Softball Association play from the weekend, the Tennis and Lutherans dipped the Gateway Travel to 65 in men's slow pitch play. West and Blue Marlins uh, put away the start all Sharks 7-1, the Pats Uniform Reds defeating Police Crime Stoppers 11-8, and the co-ed side of things, Grand Lucan Mixers defeated the Junior Grand Crushers 8-3, and Kelly Space Setters, they stopped the D's Drivers 17-2-6. Now the Corps and Eliminators play the men's fast pitch game, so let's go between the lines. The Rising Curry is meeting on the mound and going over the game plan against the Elnet X Eliminators. Elnet game plan was to hit the softball, and they sure did that. Two runs will score on this base hit to right field. A riser should kill Beckford arm and south, and he gave up a run on this wild pitch. Beckford unloaded another wild pitch, and this time walking a batter. That's the night for Beckford. Eliminators stuck to the game plan, and the good sticks, they rolled up the runs. A rising pitcher was simply serving up the runs, and also a good serving at that. That's a base hit to left. The next batter cashed in on the outside pitch. This one goes out to center field, and the bleeding finally will stop for the Couriers. Elnet X Eliminators Ken Storr working on the 8-1 cushion went to work, and that's a K. A rising Courier settled down, you think? Well, a good base hit to center field, but watch the base running. The Couriers ran themselves simply out of the ball game. Elnet went on to win this one 8-1, and for coaches Higgs and Green, it's back to ground zero. Now the Africa Softball Association got some games in on the weekend. The DNR Sluggers defeated the Super Solution at 12 to 10. Kevin Ellis was three for three, five RBI. Thomas Blanks Kelly got the win to Los Coast to Troy Bullard. The Creative Bulldogs blasted Hopetown Records nine to one. And Jared Hart Douglas built it uh, two doubles, two singles as part of a four for five game and tack on it at five RBIs. The win goes to Lyle of Big Boy Sawyer who threw a one hitter, struck out 11 batters. Adrian Biff Henschel tagged with the loss. The Greater Bulldogs, they also shut out the Super Solution 8-0. Loud Big Boy Sawyer with the perfect game, folks, threw a no-hitter, struck out 14 batters. Troy Bullard got the loss, and the Greater Bulldogs with the perfect weekend, defeated the DNR Sluggers 8-1. Tyler Russell got the win there, and the loss goes to Thomas Blanks Kelly. As far as Super Solution, they turned back the Hope Time Wreckers 7-5. Uh, Troy Bullard went the distance, the loss goes to my good friend Oscar to go roll, having some trouble over there. Well, the game of basketball is universal, and the results of playing the game can also be far-reaching. 
The recently held Urban Renewal Basketball Tournament focused on the young men being loyal and promoting their country. The game of basketball is big worldwide and the avenue to use it is a motivational tool was the point raised by the Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Works and Urban Development, the Honorable Philip Brave Davis. This game has become the only means by which many young people secure excellent educational opportunities for their athletic, personal, and social development. Among other things, basketball should serve to develop values that help make our future adult citizens better citizens because the same stimulates peaceful and respectful interaction among the people and countries. The message to the coaches of the game of basketball was straightforward. It's not easy to be a coach, but it's important that coaches practice what they preach and stay the course. I challenge each of you as coaches to seriously undertake teaching concepts and strategies that allow your team members to successfully develop into responsible citizens. To teach is more difficult than to learn. We all know this, but we often forget it. Teaching is more difficult because, as coaches, you not only need to have a far greater knowledge at all times, but you also have to teach how and what to learn, and sometimes what not to learn. Basketball can put up a pretty good case to be named the national sport of the Bahamas. But that's still up for debate. And also I got to say to my good friend uh, Dave Moxie who gave up sailing to go and play softball. Now he wants to give up softball and come and play golf. Dave, there's no tacking in golf, okay? Just remember that. That's a look at sports tonight. <laughs>